know, we get reflect on the end of the year and look at the new year. I think about time and all this stuff. I, I, I get kind of nostalgic in one hand, but also wonder about the future. You know, it's neat to talk to someone who's been around a while because some of the people that have gone through like World War II amaze me. We went to visit um, a, a, a museum one time down in New Orleans. It was a World War II museum or an Army Museum or something like that or Air Force Museum. And in there was all these airplanes, this one building. You walk through it and, and there was a World War II veteran who'd been part of one of those fighter wings. And he actually was, uh, had, was credited with actually having uh, a couple... He had shot down a couple of enemy planes and all that. And, and he was very humble about his experience, but very, very blessed he felt to be alive and to come out of that and, and to have the story to tell. And his perspective on life was very refreshing. Someone who has been through struggles and trials ahead of time, you know, ahead of us. Uh, we can talk to and how how did you get through this God gets us through and we are thankful that the things he he's gotten people through in the past he will get us through in the future there's a guy in the book of, uh, in the Bible called John there's actually several people called John but I believe the person who wrote the book of uh, of, of the gospel of John is the same person who wrote the epistles of John because the the, the same type of grammar and all that. And and this John in, in the in the gospel, we believe, is the one who's one of the younger apostles. And we believe from, from information from history and from tradition that he lived to be one of the oldest of the apostles. And when he writes the book of 1 John, he's an older person and he's referring back to the gospel of John and many of his writings. But he's someone who had been there. I want you to think about talking to a veteran in the kingdom of God and listen to his story. Get an idea of this as, as Keith shares with us the scripture from today's passage in 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. That which was from the beginning, which we heard, which we've seen with our eyes, which we looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim to you concerning the light, word of life, the life appeared. We've seen it and testified to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. Thank you, Keith, for sharing the scripture today. Let's pray. God... Make your word come alive to us. Take us back in time. And maybe we sit at the feet of one of your apostles and hear him talk about Jesus. Help us to, to experience what he's experiencing. That is the goal of his writing, is that we would experience it the way that he experienced it. And fill us with wonder and awe and confidence as we face turbulent times. Help us to be connected to you, Lord, to your word, to the word of life, in Jesus' name, amen. You know, there's, there's, there's reason why we pick out these graphics. I'm looking at it and it's a bridge, that's connection. There's a light and there's lights along the path. And so you can look at that and think about it throughout the day, maybe be a distraction, maybe not, but there's, there's imagery and a lot of stuff that we wanna use to make us think about what we're talking about today, connected, to something that is reliable when things aren't reliable anymore. You know, we have all kinds of things we have frustrations about not getting connected to, like your internet staying connected, your electricity, and you know, we wonder about which, which internet's more reliable than others and which source of, of heat is better than others. No, you know, at least we think about that up here, down south. I mean, I think about it as much until certain times. But, you know, the idea of, of being connected. Listen, God has gone to great lengths to connect with you and me. Just would you open your heart and listen to him today? The, the, the Apostle John, uh, the author of this book is called the John the Elder. And it's kind of funny. If it's the same person, I believe it was, as John, who was the, one, the, the disciple whom Jesus loved in the Gospel of John. He's older now, and he's writing to a group of people in this, this get this, this is not just to a, to a letter to a big church of people. And oftentimes we think about churches today, and this is changing, it's a, a large group of people now. It's not just a large, it is a large group of people, but not all together one place at one time. 
but connected the way you and I are right now. In fact, John was, was probably the head of the church in Ephesus at this time. And, they were, and the church in Ephesus was not a large building with a large gathering of people on Sunday mornings. It was several small groups of people meeting in homes just like you are right now. That's who he's writing to. And they've gone through some struggles and some tri trials, of course. There have been persecutions. But also, there's evidence that this group of people had suffered a major split or, or breaking away because someone or a, a group of people had taught heresy in the church and it was not the truth. And John's going to address that in this passage. And so the church had gone through a turbulent time. Who do I listen to? Who do I fellowship with? And what do I do as a result of all the stuff that's happened? There's a lot of distrust and broken relationships in this group of people. And John is writing to restore confidence in the truth. And so he shares his story and he goes back and he talks about, listen, there's something you can rely upon. There is the word of God. There is Christ. You can rely upon him when everything else out there you don't trust. And we're in that situation today. A lot of times people have a lack of trust for information sources. There's a lack of trust. We can't trust in the system that's out there. In fact, a lot of people just don't know what's going on. And perhaps you're facing that right now. You know, do I get the vaccine? Do I not get the vaccine? You know, do I go to work or not? Should I stay home? Do I stay home or go to church? Should I wear a mask when I'm in my car or not? Whatever. Hey, all that stuff, we're still figuring out. But listen, when it comes to your soul, your eternal soul, I can assure you there's someone you can trust. And that is Jesus. No matter what you go through, he is there for you and he's reliable. The first thing I want to encourage you today is to get connected to the Word. You know, a lot of times this time of year, people would make resolutions, and I made those resolutions. I'm going to read through the Bible in this year, and I usually come up short. You know, I'm just not that good of a reader. My wife can probably read through it in probably nine months. I'll probably get through it in 15. But, but you can be committed to be connected to the Word. It's, more, it's not so much about the content of how much you read. It's about being connected to what you read. It's the same thing with our ministry. It's not how much content we give you. It's the fact that we stay connected. Stay connected to the Word of God this year. How do you do that in your life? Maybe you have some ideas you can share online right now. You know, maybe for you it's read it every morning or maybe listen to have this app on your phone, whatever you do. But how are you going to stay connected to God's Word? Because that's the most important thing you do this year. Get connected. See, in turbulent times such as ours, there are people who are deniers. There's not really a problem out there. There are people who are reverters. They want to go back the way things were. There are the resigners, people who have quit. And you know that 22% of people who went to church last year are not going to church now. Not even online. They've just resigned. There are adapters. And that's probably what you are right now. You're adapting to church online. I'm adapting to it. And there's innovators finding new ways to gather and connect. The last year I did my word of the year was gather. I had to figure out new ways to gather. You know what my word is this year? It's connect. We're going to find new ways to connect with you. Almost everyone I know has been touched by this pandemic. But Jesus is still someone you want to stay connected to through all this. Because if we're connected to Jesus, we'll survive this because we'll live, we'll live forever anyways. You need to be connected to the word of life. Jesus is the word. It says in John, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Jesus is the word. Logos. He is the trustworthy knowledge and truth that you need today about what really matters. Your soul is eternal. This body may die, but your soul goes on forever are you ready? Are you connected to Christ and his word? Stay connected. Get connected to the word of life this year. What is the anchor we hold on to when, when the storm rages? Uh, it's Jesus. It's the word of life. What, is, what, is, what stays the same uh, is the message of the hope of salvation. I don't know a lot of things about what's going on with all the stuff out there politically and COVID and all that stuff, but I know that Jesus saves my soul. I know he offers hope and salvation. And this is what John writes about. I want you to have this joy. We want to have, we want you to have the joy we have. You can have it if you know Jesus and you're connected to him. You see, he says to hold fast, stay connected to Christ. That's a message throughout this whole letter that John writes. In these turbulent times, we wonder what source of information should we, should we turn to? And, you know, I found it that, that when it comes to the, the world out there, there's so many conflicting sources. 
I have to say, what is more important? That is my eternal soul in serving Jesus. What has endured all this, what will endure in the future? It is God and his word. So therefore, I want to be connected to him. He's my foundation. He's my future. He's the one I'm connected to. So that being said, I want to stay connected to him. Listen, if I'm going to do that, I need to pay attention then to his word. And I like the fact that in his word, we have witnesses in the word, which gives us reliability to the, to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. John says this. He says, listen, what was from the beginning, that eternal being, Jesus, he came to the earth. And he describes it in the gospel of John, of course. He says, we have we have heard with our ears. We are witnesses. We've seen with our eyes. We have, we have looked upon and touched with our hands all of his senses. And he says this, this witness he shares with us is reliable. John and all these who went out there and shared this story, this truth about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And no one disputed it. The powerful story. of No one else could share this about their leaders. They could. And they went out and they gave their lives. So they would not die for such a lie. You can read the books by Lee Strobel and Josh McDowell and others and, 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 and see the apologists and say, look, it is illogical for them to say these things and do these things in that situation. And women who spoke up and said, we saw him alive. In that culture, they would never have been believed, but they're recorded as witnessing the Christ alive. All this power, the resurrection available to us is real because we have real witnesses. Pay attention to the witnesses of the word and they're found recorded in the Bible. They are the words of Christ. And they come out and we read it in John, inspired by the spirit. John is sharing with us truths that are reliable, but he's also given us a personal account of what he saw. It's nice to go talk to people like that who've been there, saw him, and he's a witness well, God, so the witness of Christ to John was from the beginning. The witness of John to us, he shares with us as well. What we have heard and seen, he shares with you a reliable witness for us to pay attention to. So you pay attention to this witness of John. And what is he saying? He says in this passage, he says that you can experience the same fellowship with the word of Christ with Christ himself, who is the word, as we have had with him. This is what he says. He says, there's, there's a connection here. He says, that which we've seen and heard and all said, we proclaim unto you so your fellowship may be with us and our fellowship was with him. He's explained to us, you can experience the fellowship with God as real as John did, seeing, touching, hearing, the reality of God. God speaks to people today. Yes, it's going to be consistent with his word. That's why we want to be connected to his word. We want to stay in his word. It's reliable. He can be speaking to you right now in a way that I don't even understand because he speaks to you clearly and personally. What might he be saying to you about the year to come? How about relax? I got this. Follow me. I'll lead you through this. I will help you. Because Jesus has been there before, and he will endure through all this. There is experience of fellowship. Connection to others who are connected to Christ is real. We have fellowship. The Bible says in Colossians 3, 16, this is what we should do when we get together for church, basically, online or anywhere. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, uh, with singing and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Let's be grateful because God has given us something to experience as real as John and all the other apostles of the first century. John goes on and says, these things we write so that our joy may be made complete. Now it's interesting those words, complete joy, are the same grammar used in the Gospel of John, first, chapter 15, verse 11, when Jesus says to his disciples, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. See, John is just taking and reminding the church of the words of the first letter he sent out, the Gospel of John, when Jesus talked about joy for the disciples, 
who stay connected to the vine. And Jesus, I am the vine. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. Again, the word, ask what you will shall be done for you. Answered prayer, communion with God. He, he talks about this. I'm sharing this with you so your joy might be complete, Jesus says. And now John is saying, hey, listen, if you receive all this, if you experience Jesus the way we've experienced in this reality, if you find hope and trust in Jesus, our joy will be, will be made complete because as us older people watching people get excited like kids at Christmas time, right? I don't want gifts at Christmas time. I want to watch my grandkids open up gifts at Christmas time. I don't mind some gifts, but it's much more joyful to see others receiving it. John's saying, our joy is complete when you receive this. And Jesus says, my joy is complete. John said, I want your joy to be complete. He wanted John's, he wanted yours to be complete because you're in connection you're abiding in the word of God. Listen, heaven and earth may pass away. All this may pass away. All the political, all the, all the physical, all the health issues, all of the, all the things you enjoy or don't enjoy is going to pass away. But Jesus said, God's word says, my word will endure forever. Have you received Christ into your heart? The eternal Word of God made flesh, Jesus, have you received him? If you receive him, you receive this joy. You live in the joy of the word. He says, these things we write so that our joy may be made complete. And these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you, that your joy may be full. I want you to take time now and, and prayerfully ask God to fill you with his joy. We'll have communion in just a moment. If you have some juice or some, some bread or crackers you want to use, I invite you to get them out and we'll pray about them in a moment and we'll have communion. And I hope you join us. So if you're uh, still texting your friends about whatever's going on in your life, uh, let's just stop and focus on communion right now. Or maybe, maybe you need to give the kids a, a snack over there to you know, keep them occupied just for a few minutes, you know. We just, open up our heart in communion with the Lord. Uh, the Bible tells us that we should come together and do this in such a way that we're, we're surrendered to God. We don't have any ill feelings towards others. And so uh, I pray that the peace of God will be with you and you can respond by saying to one another and also be with you. Our Lord Jesus taught his disciples to, uh, to share together in this meal and to have some bread that would represent his body and have juice that would represent his blood shed for you and I. That's the new covenant that Jesus died once for all, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, it says in 1 Peter 3. So we, we may have some bread. Let's just pray. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you take whatever we're using now, some bread or a wafer, and you would consecrate it for the purpose of reminding us of the life of Jesus that was given for us. Thank you for all of what that means. There's so much more we can even fathom right now. I pray, God, that you would take the juice we use and you remind us of the blood of Jesus Christ shed for our forgiveness of sins. And I pray, oh God, that in this time, you would be with us in a very tangible way that we would recognize. And they would receive you the way that John talked about us receiving you and know your presence the way John talked about it. In Jesus' name. Lord Jesus took bread the night that he was betrayed and he broke it and he blessed it and he passed it to his disciples. He says, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat this. Lord Jesus took a cup custom. A lot of toasts were made during the, uh, the dinner they were having called the Passover. But they were done with the Passover. And he says, okay, he passes the cup around. He says, this is the cup of the new covenant. They just celebrated the old covenant. He said, this is the new covenant. This is my blood shed for you. We put our faith and trust in Jesus for everything we've done wrong. And he is powerful enough to forgive and to restore take this juice, whatever you have, 
remembering his blood. And drink it and be thankful. Let us pray together. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And may God bless you on this new year.